Welcome to my channel. Back in 1988, someone lent me an Olympus OM SLR camera over the summer, and I absolutely loved using it. I liked it so much that I took an Olympus camera with me when I went to study for my degree. This is the Olympus OM10, which was introduced in 1979. It's a classic 35mm camera, and was once the biggest selling 35mm SLR in the world, so there are plenty of them available on eBay. The OM10 is a manual focus, aperture priority, auto exposure SLR, aimed at amateurs or novices who want better quality photos than they get from an Instamatic. So let's have a tour of the camera. On the top right of the camera is the wind on lever, and here is the shutter release. That's a really satisfying clunk noise. Around the edge is the activator switch. I'll tell you what this does in a moment. This is the ISO speed setting. You lift it up and rotate to set the ISO. There's a strange idea of exposure compensation where you match the ISO of your film to the amount of compensation. For instance, if I line up the minus one setting to the 100 there, that's supposed to be exposure compensation of minus one. Also on this dial is the mode switch which is set using this lever hidden underneath. That's definitely fiddly and not as slick as the more expensive Olympus models. When it's set to auto, you set the aperture and the camera sets the shutter speed. It shows in the viewfinder what shutter speed the camera is choosing. All you have to do is keep the shutter speed at a 60th of a second or faster if you're hand holding. The B setting is for long exposures. Pressing down opens the shutter, releasing closes it. The last setting is manual mode, for which you'll need this. This is the manual adapter, and you add it, just that prong goes in there, and there you have manual exposure. You just see which shutter speed the camera recommends, and you then set that on the knob here. This is useful when you don't want to rely on the OM10's automatic exposure. For instance, if there's a big difference in brightness between foreground and background, then the camera meter can sometimes be confused. On top of the pentaprism is a hot shoe, with an extra contact for the dedicated T20 and T32 flash guns. The OM10 doesn't inherit the OM2's off-the-film flash metering. You're much better off buying something like a Vivitar 283, which has a movable head to allow you to use bounce flash and get softer light. You'll have to set a 60th of a second manually for the flash sync. The switch on the left turns the camera on and off. Turn it on and the viewfinder display comes on. After 90 seconds it turns off, so just nudge the activator button and it comes on again. The check function makes a strange whining noise if the battery is OK. If you press the shutter while the camera is turned off and you have the mode selector dial set to auto, then the camera will automatically power up as you press the shutter release and it will give the correct exposure. You can also set a self timer. And this lamp on the front flashes as it's counting down. Because it has this light instead of a lever, that makes it very easy to customise the leatherette without having to remove any parts. Plenty of OM10s on eBay have this, and it's quite easy to do. I did something similar with my Minolta XG2. Loading film is easy. Just pull up the rewind knob here, that opens the back, then you place the cartridge in the back here, pull the film across, and just tuck the end of the film into one of these sprockets here. Now wind on a frame, close the back, and wind on until the frame counter gets to one. And now you're ready to take your first picture. When you've got to the end of your film, just turn this clutch here, like that, and then you can rewind the film using this lever back into the cassette. On the bottom of the camera is a tripod socket. That's the battery cover. Inside there are two LR44 batteries, and here are the contacts for the auto winder, which advances the film at 2.5 frames per second. The camera uses the Olympus OM lens mount. To remove the lens, you press that button, and there you can see the lens mount. There's a good range of lenses available from Olympus, including this 100mm 2.8, which is a great portrait lens at a good price on eBay. The depth of field preview is built into the lens, just here, that button. So every Olympus OM lens you buy 
will have a depth of field preview button, regardless of which camera you use. Don't confuse this lens mount with the Olympus Micro Four Thirds or Four Thirds bayonet. Those are for digital lens only and they won't fit this camera. You can buy a databank version of the camera which imprints the date on the picture and a black version of the camera was sold with a databank already fitted called the OM10 Quartz. In the US, a version of the camera called the OM10 FC was released. It wasn't a different version, it was just bundled with a manual adapter. The OM10 is very well designed and a pleasure to use. It's incredibly light, even though it's chunkier than the OM2. I tried it with both the 50mm 1.8 and the 100mm 2.8 for these photos. The viewfinder is big and bright, much better than many comparable cameras. So is it a cheaper way to get an equivalent of the OM2 and also use the Olympus lens system? I have the luxury of having a recently serviced OM2, so let's compare. The shutter speed dial of the OM2 is much more convenient around the lens. The mode dial is certainly less fiddly. I only have one button to use rather than the two dials of the OM10. You can see you need to turn it on and also use this fiddly button here. I have to remember to have this on and set to manual rather than just one switch which I have with the OM2. The OM2 is smaller and has the capability of using further accessories like the OM10 doesn't accept. It can take a 5 frames per second motor drive rather than just an auto winder. It also has TTL off the film flash metering which is very useful for macro photography. I don't use either of those. None of the differences will affect your photos. I just love the design of the OM2 so I'm sticking with that. The OM10 was followed by the OM20, OM30 and OM40 which were all quite successful. All of these double digit models were discontinued in 1987 when Olympus, very late to the party, introduced their first autofocus camera, the OM707. The OM10 is a fantastic piece of kit. When you add the manual adapter, you have all the functionality of much more expensive cameras. With all models over 30 years old, it's fair to say it's quite robust. The Seiko lens range is as good as you will ever need, and there are plenty of third-party lenses available. The viewfinder is really bright and clear, much better than many other cameras from the 1980s. It also has a very ergonomic feel, and it's quite light. This is a classic camera which you'll be really pleased with at a good price. It's very highly recommended. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've been here before and enjoyed the reviews, please subscribe as I produce new content at least once each month. I'll see you next time.